Hello everyone and welcome back to another syntax lecture. In the previous lecture we looked at the noun phrase in X bar notation. In this E lecture we're going to look at the verb phrase and also at the adjective phrase, adverb phrase, and prepositional phrase in X bar. We're also going to try to motivate the use of X bar for each one to the best that we can. Stay tuned. So in a sentence like John ate his rice with a spoon, we have here what we now know is a verb phrase. Now in the old model that we were using, this was done like this. We had a verb, which was ate, a noun phrase, which was his rice, and a prepositional phrase with a spoon. Now we're going to try to follow the same logic that we did in the previous e-lecture with noun phrases. We're going to try to draw a similar structure to that which we used in the noun phrase, which is one with bar levels, okay? Something like this. How can we motivate a bar level in the verb phrase? Well, let's try to follow the same logic we did with the noun phrase. Let's look at constituency. Now, you can imagine a sentence where I would say something like, I eat my rice with a spoon, but Janet does, or sometimes we say does so, with a fork. Now, in our NP, or the noun phrase lecture, the constituency test we used was the replacement test. For noun phrases, we used to replace with one. For the verb phrase, we can replace with do, so, or does, so. Sometimes even so did, or so does. Okay, or any combination really of that nature. So here we are. I eat my rice with a spoon, but Janet does so with a fork. So now, what does this does so here stand for? We already have the PP here with a fork, so we're not going to need this. What does so refers to then is eat my rice. So then what we're looking at here is that eat my rice is a constituent. It forms a constituent without with a spoon. Again, the flat structure here cannot show us how only this can become a constituent without this. However, using our V bar models in the X bar notation, we can get something like that. Here's an example of how that could be done. Now, do so here again replaced what? It replaced eat my rice alone. Is that portrayed in this structure? Of course it is. Here's eat and here's my rice. So this replacement really targeted this V bar, which is only one constituent. Great, so now we've motivated V bar for the verb phrase as well. Here's a second test just to make sure. John eats rice and makes eggs with a spoon. This is what it would look like in X bar notation. Again, recall that one of the constituency tests was the coordination and conjunction test. And once again, the idea was that if you can coordinate two constituents together, that means they must be of the same type. So we were able to coordinate eats rice with makes eggs. So they must be of the same type. But recall, in our flat structure, these together don't really have a type. But now they do. It's V bar. So now let me take this opportunity to remind you or help you notice something here. When we were discussing noun phrases, we used one replacement. The one used to target N bars for replacement. Likewise, in the verb phrase, we use a do so replacement, and that also targets V bars. So it seems like there's a lot of good evidence toward this intermediate projection, which we call the the bar level projections. So like we did with the noun phrases, let's write up the rules for making a verb phrase. The verb phrase or the maximal projection gives rise to a V bar. A V bar gives rise to another V bar with a prepositional phrase that's optional or a V bar with an adverb phrase that is optional. Then we can move down to the head level 
the V bar will give us the head V plus an optional noun phrase. Now let's move on to adjectives and adverb phrases. Let's start off with an example for the adjective phrase. Take the noun phrase, the very dark blue and bright green poster. What we have inside here is an adjective phrase which modifies poster. But let's look inside this adjective phrase. What does very here modify? It seems to modify dark blue and bright green as well. So the poster really is very dark blue and it is also very bright green. How is that going to work? Second thing we want to think about is that we also have here coordination. That means these must somehow be constituents on their own. Here's one more example. John is very afraid of Mary, but less so of Sally. So this is kind of like our one replacement for noun phrases and our do so replacement for verb phrases. So this is what the adjective phrase very afraid of Mary would look like in X bar notation. Notice here how we still have the prepositional phrase of Sally. Less here is just like very. So really the only thing we changed or used so to replace was the head afraid. So this would read out John is very afraid of Mary but less afraid of Sally. So now let's try to spell out the rules for the adjective phrase. The maximal projection gives rise to an adjective bar. If you noticed in the previous example, there was no specifier to adjective phrase. The adjective bar gives rise to an optional adverb phrase and another adjective bar. Then our adjective bar, which introduces the heads, would give me the adjective and an optional prepositional phrase. Last one we're going to talk about here is the prepositional phrase. Now there's less evidence to bar projections in a prepositional phrase, but nevertheless, the evidence still exists. Take for example, John kicked the ball off the ground and into the goal. So we have the prepositional phrase off the ground and into the goal being coordinated, meaning that these two are of the same type. And they are coordinated together, so they seem to create one big prepositional phrase. The way this would look is like so. So as you see here, we have our conjunction connecting two P-bar levels that each form constituents on their own. Off the ground and into the goal. Now we don't necessarily have to find enough evidence to motivate bar levels or intermediate levels in every single type of phrase. Sometimes the motivation comes just from stylistic matters or from keeping with what we saw in other phrase types and trying to keep a more uniform theory. Of course, there are more pieces of evidence for each type of phrase, but that would be out of, out of the scope of the matters that we are discussing in this class.